You know, when Jerry and I talked about this theme of big data, we kind of ask ourselves, where could we find somebody that knows a lot about it that could also relate to, to aviation? And honestly, there was only one person that we had in mind and one company. Because a company called Passer, which some of you may have heard of, and their CEO, Jim Barry, is that company and is that person. You know, it's interesting to me that CEOs of airlines literally keep, some of them, a screen on their desk that's populated with information about what's happening in the NAS from Passer. People throughout the airline operations centers keep Passer information in front of them. People at airports who run our big airports today put screens up to keep the information Passer provides uh, in front of them. It comes from a company led by Jim Barry who's never run an airline and he's never run an airport, but he is a confidant to those who do because he is a trusted source for not just information, but analytics derived from big data. They literally know more at this moment about what has happened in the NAS up until this moment today, what is happening right now, and amazingly, what will happen throughout the course of the day. And they'll tell us the fog will lift here and eventually we'll get planes in and out. But they'll work with the airlines and the airports to do it. And the analytics that they, that they have developed uh, will help perfect performance in the NAS. And so, I ask you to join me in welcoming to our stage Jim Barry, President and CEO of Passer. Jim, welcome. Thanks, Craig. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Uh, that was actually my presentation. So, uh, listen, I, uh, uh, Craig, thanks very much. I've known Craig for a couple of years, and it's nice to be able to say publicly uh, that, first of all, it's appropriate that he's introduced me to talk about the money ball of aviation because this is what he believes. But what I've always admired about Craig, and if you know Craig, he's a guy who sets lofty goals. Uh, he doesn't believe we should look at the same old way of doing things as the reason why something shouldn't be done. He understands the power of data. And I think what I admire so much about Craig is he always keeps an eye on the end point. You never hear a bad thing come out of Craig's mouth about another person, and all, everything is always positive. It's always focused at the end point. I always admire about that about Craig, and Craig, it's good you being your friend, and, and thank you again for the introduction. Those things that you can measure, you can enhance. So those things that you can measure, you can enhance. Kind of summarizes the discussion. Imagine you're the airline chief operating officer of a really big airline, and one of your biggest hubs, your most profitable hub, has over 200 ground delay programs a year. Each ground delay program or ground stop costs about a million dollars to the airport itself. And given the percentage that you are of that airport, it's about $160 million cost each year, these ground delay programs. And this chief operating officer says, I'm tired of accepting these problems is just, that's the way it is at aviation. We hear that way too often. So he calls us up and says, what can we do about these ground delay programs? Is there a way for us to be able to better predict, mitigate the impact of it, or even, do we really even have to have the ground delay program? So when we go back and we go into our database, as Craig says, we know for over 10 years, everything that's happened in the NAS for the flight activity, we know what their weather was, and the question now is, with the data, with the experts we had on our team, can we predict what the weather is going to be and what the best performance is of that airport for those given weather conditions? So using those predictive analytics, using that big data in combination with the experience, the deep experience of the FAA and the airline operations, we've had a significant effect on reduce, number one, predicting, Number two, mitigating the impact of the ground delay program. And number three, in some cases, like two weeks ago, there was gonna be a ground delay program at a major airport. With our ability to predict out what the weather is gonna be, as compared, compared to what the best performance of the airport is, we completely eliminated, eliminated the need for the ground delay program. Big data, predictive analytics, in combination with experts, this is why people have called us the money ball of aviation. 
Another big issue is you have an airport, one of the biggest airports in the country is closing its longest runway for four months of maintenance. So one of the busiest airports in the country. And the airlines using the airport said, I am terrified of what this is going to do to the airport. Wall Street Journal says this is going to be a disaster. The airlines, in their annual filing with the Security and Exchange Commission, in their 10K, under the risk section, say, if this doesn't go well, it's going to significantly affect my shareholders. So the airport system turns to us and says, hey, that big data stuff that you have, is there a way that we can optimize the limited runways at the airport to be able to get the most out of the airport and ideally run the operation so that it's not a disaster? So teaming with the FAA, the airlines, and the airport, we put together a predictive capability, predictive analytic capability that says, number one, how do we get the most out of the variable runways that are there? Number two, rather than pushing aircraft back first come, first serve, which is the normal way, that's the way we've always done it, right? We hear that in aviation all the time. What we did was, based on the commercial interest of the airlines, based on the capabilities of the gates, the ramps, the runways, and the departure fixes, digitizing everything, what we found was, if we push you back in a certain sequence, rather than having the long conga lines of the past, and you've seen those conga lines, right? Uh, not as much at Austin as you would see at JFK. But what we were able to do, the year-over-year -year performance, and given these variables, given these variables, this is the performance, the year-over-year -year performance of the airport. Major Northeast Airport shutting down its longest runway. For some of the most important metrics of that airport, the year-over-year -year performance was better without the runway than with the runway the previous year. Isn't that amazing? Using big data, using predictive analytics, connecting people and machines, sometimes called the Internet of Things, and m most importantly, data combined with experts will very often get a wonderful result, and that's what happened here. Again, in coordination with the wonderful support of the FAA, the airlines, the airports, that year is one of the greatest successes of NextGen, is one of the greatest successes of the FAA NextGen because of this money ball effect. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. And then we had, the, for example, the crash just a couple years ago here in Austin. The government turned to us with our historical database that we had with the experts that we had and said, what happened? At the time, most people believed it was an accident. Using the owner-operator data that we have, using the historical data we have, knowing what should, generally what flight behavior is normal and what is not, within minutes of the incident, the head of Homeland Security was briefed using our, our capability, data predictive analytics and, and our experts that said, we believe it was in fact an intentional act when nobody at the time thought it was some of the effects of having big, big data with better experience. So at the end of the day, our customers have challenged us and we believe there's a revolution taking place right now in aviation, where we do believe there's a better way. Aviation historically has been a little slower to adopt technology than other industries. I came from the cancer diagnostics industry and before that I was in the Marine Corps. They were much quicker to adopt newer technologies and newer ways of doing things. Listen, there's darn good reasons for it. Safety is paramount here. But a more efficient system, as a senior person from the FAA told me last, told me last week, is also a safer system as well. So as a result of this, what we do as an organization, we, we look at all, how do we remove any of the different constraints from travel? from the travel experience. It's because that we've challenged the traditional ways of doing things. Well, that's the way it's always been. That a couple years ago, I was talking to the head of operations at United Airlines, who happens to be a Boston Red Sox fan, as am I, and he said, oh, you're the money ball of aviation. And it stuck from there going, going forward. Great movie.
And so you can see why we were quite flattered when he said, oh, so you're challenging the traditional norms. You're saying, oh, you're going to have that ground delay program. There's going to be an imbalance 10 hours from now. There's really not a whole lot you can do about it. And so th that's what we've done, combining the, the challenge of the conventional norm with data, with experience, a lot can happen. A couple years ago, after Super Bowl 48, uh, and who won Super Bowl 48? Who knows? You're first thinking who was in it. So who's in it is on the screen. So Seattle won it. They killed uh, Manning, which was a great day. But we were all concerned. <laughs> we, were all, we were all concerned that there was going to be a big winter a snowstorm during the Super Bowl. Remember, we were thinking, well, it hit the next morning. So the worst time for aviation is when everybody's trying to take off out of HPN, out of Teterboro, JFK, and LaGuardia. So the question right now is, can you take that same stuff you did at that other big airport, and rather than everybody pushing back at the same time and optimizing the performance of the airport, at HPN what we did was we actually put this capability in place, same data, same platform, everybody sharing data collaboratively instead of everybody you know, optimizing by silo. And as a result, with full transparencies, there was a beautiful departure rate coming out of Westchester into the, into the Metroplex as a result of the, the sharing, of this, uh, sharing of this information. So again, we challenge the conventional norm. So look, what is this? What airport is this? Everybody guess? It's close to home. DFW. DFW. And with DFW, when a weather event, pop-up thunderstorm happens, what occurs? You get a lot of delays and you get a lot of diversions. And those diversions scatter all over uh, Texas. And today, they go according to what the pilot filed and where he said, this is going to be to my diversion airport. And what can happen, especially here, for example, in Austin, is that some airports can get overwhelmed, right? Because they don't really know the capacity of those airports they're going to. They don't know the cap capabilities of those airports. But what happens? If you look at the data, you look at the historical data. If you get the airports to now start to share information on, listen, I can take more planes. I have the capability. I have the tow bars, like for example, remember a couple years ago in the Northeast, the airports got slammed and, and Hartford got overwhelmed by aircraft where all kinds of other airports were available. How do you give them the ability to say, I can take more? So what we're working on in conjunction with the airports, the DFW airport, which is the great leader of this, a guy named Jim Kreitz, who's the executive vice president, saying, listen, there's a better way of doing this. How do we more evenly distribute the aircraft so some airports can actually get business they then never would have gotten? And then the airports that don't are getting saturated can say, I can't take any more right now. And most importantly, let's get the planes back to DFW as, as quickly as possible, reduce costs, improve passenger satisfaction as well. So this is the kind of projects that we would work on. Big data, predictive analytics, connecting people and machines in a real-time fashion. And the next slide, here you can actually see, this is how Austin, for example, would broadcast its capabilities. So they would actually be able to say, I can take more in these manners. And if you can digitize it in real time, then when that pilot is flying, if you have that connectivity, which we're almost there, then the pilot knows, in fact, what's the best airport to be able to divert to right now based on the capacity and the capability. So these are the kinds of ways that our, challenge, our customers are, being, are challenging us to be able to create a better experience for the, for the passengers. Another challenge that's presented to us is how do you integrate these millions of drones now safely into the air traffic system? So right now, a lot of the studies that have been done has said that in the agricultural areas, that's great, the greatest benefit of drones. But we all know, and we watch the commercials, uh, we know that they're going to come towards the urban areas where the traffic is, and that's where you know, we have our data. And that's where we have our experience. So we've partnered with a company called AirMap, which will integrate actually what the drone is doing with the actual air traffic system. So AirMap is the platform that the drone use, most drone users use. They've partnered with us because they know, we know where the manned air traffic is. Number two, we know how to more effectively um, operate in manned air spaces. So we believe this could be a, a really good solution going forward. Another challenge that was given to us when we're digitizing the airspace. So next gen, there's billions of dollars being spent by the government to be able to improve the efficiency and the safety of the airspace. 
with many successes across the board. The airlines, the airports, general aviation, and business aviation have turned to us and said, so you're digitizing everything. We would like to know, from your perspective, from the commercial airlines perspective, is next gen having the desired effect? So we've put together, we've taken the metrics that have been recommended by the RTCA and the Next Gen Advisory Committee. Our dashboard now is being used by all these different organizations to be able to say what's working and what's not working with really good success. And so this dashboard, so Craig was saying their executive CEOs have the password dashboard on their uh, laptops or on their devices. This dashboard actually now says in real time, if they'd like it, what's working. So if we're putting surface management systems in all these different airports, are we getting the desired results? And luckily, a lot of the preliminary results are, are really quite positive. Aero TV is brought to you by since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com.